If you walk along the beaches, it's not uncommon to come across shipwrecked pieces and hunks. That's exactly what happened two summers ago when a girl was taking a swim outside her cabin on Whitefish Bay. And she was out swimming around out here in shallow water and found some wreckage and we came down one evening after work and came out and uh, waded out to it and kind of uh, snorkeled around, took some pictures of it and measured it a bit and there's definitely some wreckage there. Members of the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society started investigating the shallow wreck. As the wreckage comes and goes, the sand, the wind, the sand comes and goes, so nobody had reported it. This first time it had been reported. Now we have the GPS coordinates for at least parts of it in any event. With those coordinates, the searchers came up with a plan. With the long, cold winter we've had, it was actually possible to search through the ice. So this is probably the earliest that the, the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society's uh, research team has been out looking at a shipwreck in the season. <laughs> We're going to do a 30 by 30 meter grid. It's like the Shipwreck Society teamed up with Discovery World and the Neville Public Museum out of Wisconsin. They used this ground penetrating radar to search. The hope is that it's the invincible. Old maps show she was beached here in the early 1800s. Lieutenant Bayfield, when he was mapping Lake Superior back in the early 1820s, marked the wreck of the schooner Invincible on the maps that we have up at Whitefish Point, the copies of the maps and it shows the Invincible and it sank in 1816, being the first commercial shipwreck. If they could still see it in 1823, that means it could have drifted or been pushed down here by the storms, who knows? So that it's just neat, neat possibility. Back and forth for hours. The process is slow and cold. We'd love it to be the Invincible. It doesn't mean it will be. If this is the Invincible or it's likely to be, Probably that's part of the, this work here. If, if let's say if we we can determine that there's, it's too long to possibly be the invincible, then we know it's not the invincible. It'd still be a shipwreck worth pursuing. The ground penetrating radar does show some sort of structure beneath the sand. Kevin Cullen of the Neville Public Museum says, nevertheless, there is compelling indications that the radar worked over the ice and was able to penetrate into the substrata of the sand. However, the final verdict on whether there is an intact wreck at the location we surveyed is inconclusive. In the meantime, the search and our imaginations as to what it may be goes on. The neat part about it is this, the little girl's really excited about this shipwreck and they're kind of history buffs too. And when we told them what, what it might be, they're doing, people doing their own research and that's really the fun part about the shipwreck stuff is you try and uncover the story of what was happening and who was on it. 